Hi, Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, and the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm going to be presenting some important research that's been recently presented, uh, th in this case, one from IWCLL 2023 on the biology and genetics of Richter's transformation. This is a very complicated basic science presentation from the International Workshop on CLL 2023 by Dr. Aaron Perry, MD, PhD of Dana-Farber. Uh, and it deals with the evolution of CLL chronic lymphocytic leukemia to Richter's transformation, also known as Richter's syndrome, which carries a dismal prognosis. I'm only going to share the conclusions from this important research and it's and why it's clinically significant to patients. First thing, the majority of Richter's transformation evolves from CLL through acquisition of additional genetic mutations. Not surprising. This explains why the genetic instability seen with aberrant TP53 or 17P deletion, remember TP53 is the guardian of the genome, it keeps the genetic material intact, when it's not working well, there's going to be more genetic mutations. Why that and other mutations puts one at higher risk for Richter's transformation. Two, clonally related Richter's transformation. So that's the Richter's transformation that evolves from CLL, not that develops independent or de novo. It's distinct from de novo diffuse large B cell lymphoma, DLBCL. DLBCL is much easier to treat than Richter's. It turns out that they are genetically different, and that may explain the difference in their responses to therapy. Number three, not all Richter's is the same. Molecular subtypes of Richter's exist with significant prognostic significance. Richter's is not always a death sentence. Understanding the genetic drivers that better or worsen the prognosis gives us hope to find new ways to intervene. And finally, and here's a mouthful for you, ULP hyphen WGS, which stands for ultra low pass whole gene sequencing, CFDNA, which stands for cell free DNA, which is the DNA floating in the plasma in the peripheral blood. So what this is, is by saying, by looking in gene sequencing, DNA found outside of cells just floating in the blood, we can find evidence of Richter's before Richter's has shown up on scans or PET scans or other ways. This holds promise for a simple blood test showing early diagnosis of Richter's. This is the most exciting result. If confirmed in larger studies, ULP WGS CF DNA might eventually become a commercially available blood test that could detect Richter's many months before it's clinically apparent and therefore allow for more effective earlier treatments when the disease burden is lower and it's easier to knock it out. Today, Richter's is diagnosed with a biopsy, and in some cases, that involves a major surgical procedure depending on the location of the suspicious node. This can lead to delayed diagnosis, which is never a good thing with a rapidly growing cancer. Richter's transformation remains one of the most pressing unmet needs in the CLL community due to its generally dismal prognosis. Moreover, as more and more CLL patients are living longer with better therapies for their CLL, the risk of Richter's uh, increases because we're living longer and our CLL isn't killing us. Research such as this on the basic biology of its evolution is critical, and it's one of the reasons that the CLL Society actively funds um, research. This is our grant to Dr. Christine Ryan for her research on the apoptosis or cell death pathway in CLL. More research is needed. Thank you for listening. Stay strong. We are all in this together.